What's up, Nightwalkers? So those of you who've seen our videos before or are subscribed to the channel, you already know which devices that we have. But if you're new, we've always had PVS-14s and we've pretty much ran them in a dual configuration like this so that they would function the same as a binocular device or pretty close to one. And two, three years ago, we ended up purchasing a true bino device, this uh, night vision device's BMVD SG. And from the beginning, all of our devices have had HP Plus uh, Harris HP Plus thin film green phosphor image tubes in them and that's primarily because we purchased everything from night vision devices and they are the main uh, distributor for Harris image tubes. Uh, as of late you know we've been uh, more interested in trying out some other image tubes out there and uh, as you'll see from the most recent review video it was on a Photonis Echo 4G uh, white phosphor which is actually a Gen 2 image tube and one of the main reasons we wanted to uh, try out the Photonis was uh, to see if we liked white phosphor and if we liked it enough to uh, look into going to the next step, which would be purchasing a L3 filmless white phosphor device. And so that's the purpose of this video today. So what I did was start looking around at all the different dealers and distributors uh, that were selling devices, in particular PVS-14s, with, uh, with an L3 filmless white phosphor image tube in them. And the problem I ran into is that because these are so popular, you know, the L3 filmless white phosphor are, are very popular. And because the U.S. military, uh, you know, SOCOM and some other units out there, um, they're selecting these. So they're really hard to come by. And uh, a lot of dealers are backordered on them. If they're that popular and high demand, then obviously it's a good product. You know, as I was looking around, one thing I came across uh, was Envision Optics. They were selling PVS-14s with L L3 filmless white phosphor tubes in them. Uh, they had them in stock, they had really high specs. Uh, the only thing that going against them was they had a zone 3 blemish. And what a, what a zone 3 blemish is, and so when you look through the tube, you know, your eyes looking through this piece right here, uh, there's three zones. You know, zone 1 is the center, zone 2 is not the center, and then zone 3 is the outside. Uh, so just think of like three, you know, bigger, bigger circles going around. And so the zone 3 blemish, it's a black spot, and it's on the zone 3 region, which is on the outside of your, of your view. Uh, so I was a little skeptical, you know, I wasn't sure if that's something um, I'd want to live with. Um, but luckily I found, uh, found some people that had, you know, put some pictures up and done some, uh, some reviews on forums about these devices and they were pretty happy with them. And then the, uh, the pictures and video they showed, the blemish didn't look that bad. So I decided to go ahead and uh, contact Envision Optics. I'll tell you what, I was really impressed when I contacted them uh, because when I called them and I expressed some interest in it, um, they had, since they had these on hand, uh, they had the tubes on hand with the spec sheets. They basically said, hey, which one do you want? And they read off all the different um, specs for each tube. And, uh, and that's stellar. I mean, I, that really is because it is nice uh, to know exactly what specs that you're going to have on the device that, you, uh, that you're buying and to be able to, to pick from, from different ones and pick the one that you like the best. And most people wouldn't want to buy something that had a blemish on it, uh, but the prices of it compared to the non-blemishes, uh, it's a huge savings in, in, uh, in price. And by that, you know, what, what I mean is um, when I bought mine, um, they were going for $3,300. Uh, and if you were to get a non-blemish one with the same type of high specs on it, um, you're going to be looking at, you know, four grand or higher than four grand for one of those. And so that kind of a savings is pretty significant. I'm going to show you some different videos and pictures uh, comparing the L3 filmless white phosphor to the Harris HP Plus green phosphor thin filmed and the uh, Photonis Echo, which is the thin filmed white phosphor. And I did try to do the best I could to pick as many different lighting conditions as I could. You know, nights with no moon, nights to uh, pretty much a full moon, you know, going through vegetation, shadows and stuff like that. So. Uh, just take a look at the videos and whatnot, and you can decide for yourself based on uh, how those look. All right, so I did the same shots under uh, very good moonlight, close to a full moon, and then also with no moon, zero, uh, zero moon, starlight only, uh, just to illustrate you know, what the performance difference is uh, between good moonlight and zero moonlight. And it's, it's pretty obvious. Um, and then the better tubes definitely stand out, such as the L3 filmless, uh, under both conditions. Now this whining sound you hear, that's the auto gating uh, coming from the Harris HP Plus image tubes. Now every Harris device I've had with Pinnacle HP Plus tubes in it has had that loud auto gating sound that you can hear sometimes from several feet away. Uh, the L3 and the Photonis have zero whining sound uh, coming from them 
which is really nice when you're out by yourself in the middle of no place. It just helps you, you know, hear your environment and your surroundings a bit better than hearing that whining sound nonstop. Now right here, it's very obvious uh, how much darker the Photonis is to the L3 and to the eye, it's the same way. It's, uh, it's very noticeably darker and I think the darkness of the Photonis actually cuts into the resolution of it uh, compared to the L3. Here you can see how the HB Pluses are closer in performance to the L3 than the Echo. And I think this has to just do with Gen 3 versus Gen 2. Uh, the L3 is certainly brighter than the HP Pluses. And uh, you can see that in the video and it's definitely the same way to your eyes. All right, these shots right here are the best way I can show you the performance difference on camera uh, in very low light conditions between these tubes. Uh, very low light, there was no moonlight, starlight only, and dense clouds that were blocking the starlight even coming down. Uh, so this really shows you the performance difference between these tubes under extreme low light conditions. Now the HP Pluses, they did a lot better than the Echoes in this very low light environment. Um, performance wise, they were actually pretty close to the L3 Filmless, and I attribute that mainly to uh, Gen 3 technology versus Gen 2 technology. This one, besides being a good comparison, I just really like the coyotes getting on camera like that. Here I'm just showing you what the blend looks like on camera. You know, it doesn't bother me while I'm using it. It blends into the scenery. Uh, but if you're someone who likes to take astronomy photos or photos of the sky, uh, then one of these blend units might not be for you. So as you can see, these uh, these L3 filmless tubes are just awesome. The best looking um, image tube I've ever looked through that I've owned. Uh, so much so that as soon as I bought it, I uh, contacted Envision Optics again. And I said, if you can find me one just like that, I'll buy it. Um, and it took them, I don't know, a few weeks or so, maybe uh, something like that. And they found pretty much a perfect match uh, to this one. Uh, and I say pretty much a perfect match because this one actually has slightly higher specs. Uh, but everything else is still online, so uh, so they I mean they work fantastic together. I can say from all the different devices I've owned uh, that these two right here are the the best ones I've ever had. Um, and I've only you know you know which ones I've had, and I'm not knocking the uh, the Harris HP Plus uh, thin filmed you know image tubes. These things still do a really good job. Uh, they let you see in the dark. Uh, the resolution's good and everything else. Uh, as well as the Photonis Echo 4G uh, white phosphor, you know, that one does what it's supposed to do too. Uh, in fact, the, you know, for, for any of these, but especially for the Echoes, you know, if you're looking to save some money on a white phosphor device, um, you know, compared to, to one of these uh, L3s, you know, the Photonis is definitely a good way to go. If you're looking for, you know, the best performance, you know, the best clarity uh, and whatnot, uh, L3 Filmless White Phosphor is, is hands down um, the way to go. If you're not already subscribed to our channel, click that subscribe button down at the bottom so you can get the latest videos whenever we do them. And thank you for watching.